Excellent! Hey everyone and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am doing my monthly builds video as I have been doing uh, every month or almost every month for the past few months. Uh, so basically how this works is at the beginning of each month or near the beginning of each month I do a couple builds. I assemble these builds using PC Part Picker and I get all the parts picked out for you guys and then I share them with you and I kind of talk about my thought process as I went through to to make the builds uh, as well as hopefully getting the builds kind of kind of specified and, and narrowed down to a, a, a really specific type of build that you guys choose um, because there's some fan interaction going on here as well. Now sometimes I actually also build the builds that I talk about later on and I did do that recently with uh, for example the entry level X99 build which you can kind of see me assembling here. This is over on my channel of course my YouTube channel is Paul's Hardware. You're probably watching this on my YouTube channel but I'm also doing this live. So the entry level X99 build I actually assembled. Uh, the blue build with the BitPhoenix Aegis uh, I also did uh, a couple like a month or two back so these are all lots of fun and I like to assemble them as well because that way it's not just like hey here's a bunch of lists of parts um, I'm not going to be building the builds for this month just to give you guys that information right off the bat up front the upcoming uh, build that I am going to be doing which I haven't done yet is my August build so that's the $2,000 gaming beast and that is coming very soon so uh, subscribe to my channel and like this video if you like watching builds and that's probably going to be up in the next week or so so uh, today, by popular demand, I'm doing a couple pretty high-end builds. Uh, so if you're looking for budgets, sorry, look at some of my older ones, or I'm going to be doing more, doing more budget stuff next month. So for this uh, month, based on your guys' response and reaction last month, results. Uh, so here's here's the results for the uh, September, or for the builds you guys voted on last month, which is what you wanted to see me do for September. We have two at the top, the Mini ITX Overkill System. So Mini ITX. Overkill. I'm going to try to pack as much as I can as possible into a mini ITX build. We also have the 4K gaming system for $4,000. Uh, this includes an entire setup, so it's not just the base system, which I usually do. Uh, and that one was actually a lot of fun. Actually, both of these were a lot of fun. I put these together mostly yesterday. It took me longer than I thought because there were some, uh, there were some issues I had to kind of work around with both of these. Um, but let's just, let's just get right into it and start off with the mini ITX Overkill system. And, uh, of course, I'm using PC Part Picker to assemble these builds. That's a great website because it compares uh, prices across lots of different areas. And you can sort of get an initial look here at what I put in it. Uh, but the total cost of this build, which I, wasn't, I didn't have a price point here, but it ended up being about $2,630 altogether with everything that I picked. Now, it being a Mini ITX system meant that I needed to start with a Mini ITX board. And if you ask me, Mini ITX and Overkill, and you put those words together, I get this. This is the ASRock X99E ITX slash AC motherboard. And uh, it's, to me, is just the definition of I Overkill and Mini ITX because it's it's X99 socket LGA 2011-V3 uh, in a Mini ITX board. It's really the only Mini ITX board that is socket LGA 2011, and they even used a narrower uh, actual socket on the CPU itself here, so it's not exactly a uh, standard type. That's why this board actually ships with the CPU cooler, but I didn't want to use the CPU cooler that comes with it. I wanted something better. Uh, more, than th more on that in just a moment. So starting with the motherboard, knowing I wanted to go Haswell E with this because that's like overkill, next up I wanted to choose the case, and here's where I'll probably get lots of feedback from you guys, uh, which is like what ch case I should have chosen. Now, the thing for me with Mini-ITX is I want Mini-ITX to actually be small. And you find Mini-ITX cases out there that are actually fairly large. And so the, the Graphite Series uh, uh, 380T from Corsair, I like because it's actually pretty small. It's got a handle on the top, so like small portable, you can pick it up and carry it around. There's like the jury's out on, on the actual design of this thing and how much people like it and stuff like that. I think it looks pretty cool, but um, you know, there's definitely people who are not as into what it looks like. So, that being said, it's also got tons of ventilation on the top and sides, which I thought was important because I'm squeezing a lot of hardware into here, uh, and uh, that's pretty much where I started off with was with the motherboard and the case. Uh, so to go along with the motherboard, I chose 5820K CPU uh, Intel Core i7. Didn't want to go with the Xeon with this because uh, Linus already did it. He he wedged like what the 18 core Xeon or something into this. So I'm going not quite as crazy overkill as that, because um, then you got to go Xeon and that kind of thing. So I thought a 5820K would work. This made sense to me for a mini ITX X99 build because you don't have a bunch of PCI Express slots, and you only have, what, 28 lanes on the 5820K. So even if you went from a 5820K to a 5930K and spent an extra couple, you know, $150, $200, you're not going to be able to use the extra lanes you get because you don't have slots to, to slot them into. So I think 28 lanes is cool. And then the next... 
uh, option beyond that is going all the way up to a 5960X, which you do get a, an 8-core for that much money, but it's 650 bucks more. So if you really want to go all overkill, do that, or use the 18-core the Xeon that Linus used. Um, now, what I actually ran into a dilemma with this build with was um, choosing the CPU cooler. Uh, and I did some re some research on several forums online. This is a hard forum thread specifically about this motherboard and what CPU coolers you can use with it because it's got that weird mounting system that's actually meant for servers like this. Um, so I'll post this link uh, in the video description once I put it up. This is a screen cap they posted on here from Linus's build, which is that the motherboard actually comes with a bracket, a special mounting bracket that you can use in order to put on uh, specifically the Cooler Master uh, side on, I believe, cooler that, it, that, that can fit in there. Um, but several people have used it and sort of jury rigged it to uh, line up with some other different types of coolers. So that's going to be my suggestion. The one I actually put in the build itself is uh, what did I actually go with? The Cooler Master Neptun 240M, um, which also isn't one that it's like you'll notice there's potential issues or incompatibilities at the top of this build, and that's specifically because of the, uh, the cooler, the motherboard, and the chassis. But uh, going back over here to the actual one, All right, so I chose the Neptun 240M because I found at least one dude who's, who was like, yeah, it'll work with this. You just have to kind of bend the bracket a little bit. There you go. Uh, the other options that are out there might be the Hydro Series. The H100i from Corsair is probably like the one you want to go with. I have a little something in my eye. Uh, the H100i is what you want to go with, but it's discontinued. And if you look at this price on Newegg, it's 150 bucks right now, which is insanely overpriced. So since they discontinued it, like they're all overpriced now, so get a 240M maybe instead. Um, you can also get the H100i GTX, uh, and that one, I am told, at least according to several of the threads I read, uh, that you can actually go to Ace Tech, and Ace Tech has a bracket you can get that will work with the newer, cooler design from the GTX version, and then you should hopefully be okay. But honestly, uh, finding a CPU cooler that was big, because I wanted a 240, uh, that was not too wide for the case because the 380T has a very limited amount of space available there for the um, the radiator and the fans and also that had the mount that would fit on this bracket was a bit of a challenge. I did actually have a pretty decent amount of like looking up online of, of everything. So uh, either go with the, high, the either go with the H100i if you can find it for cheap. GTX uh, if you're willing to contact Ace Tech to get the ILM retention kit which costs about $10 and that will work with the newer kind of rounder pumps that the GTX version has. And then you should be able to move on from there. All right, uh, with that hopefully uh, minor issue out of the way, we can move on to memory. We've got a Corsair Vengeance LPX 32 gig kit. Um, thankfully, you can actually get DDR4 dual channel kits now thanks to Skylake launching. So this is 32 gigs, two by 16. So even though you've only got two DIMM slots, you can still run a dual channel and have plenty of memory in there. Going with the overkill theme, I thought 32 gigs of memory would uh, would be suitable. Uh, we also have a, a storage, right? And I went kind of, kind of crazy with my storage. I spent 750 bucks on just the storage in this for 1.5 terabytes of SSD storage. Um, so yeah, starting with the HyperX Predator from Kingston. Uh, I chose this one because it's very fast. It's M.2. It's PCI Express, not SATA or AHCI connection. So uh, it's going to be really fast. If you want a cheaper uh, option for this, go for the Samsung XP941. You can get the 512 gig version of that, which is a little bit more storage than this. It is a little bit slower than the Predator, um, but it's about 100 to 120 dollars cheaper. It's also got a green PCB and not the black PCB like the Predator has. So you know, bear that in mind as well. This case does, or the system does also have a, a color theme. It's black, uh, black, white, and blue. Kind of goes along with the case. And hello to anyone who has joined up in chat. Thanks to all of you guys for hopping in here. Uh, to round out the storage, I got a one terabyte SSD because I wanted a one terabyte SSD and I'm tired of loading up games off of mechanical drives. So you got the uh, Predator for like your operating system. In some games, you got a one terabyte Crucial BX100, actually available on Mac Mall crazily enough, uh, over here, and uh, that will give you some massive storage, and that will load up all your games really fast, and that, hey, that says overkill mini ITX to me. Uh, video card I thought was going to be an interesting choice for this system, and as the uh, R9 Nano, uh, just the Fury Nano from AMD just came out, I bet a lot of you are expecting me to throw that in here. I said no. I said no to the Nano for this build, because this is an overkill build, and the Nano, honestly, I see what they did with it, but they, they, they brought down its actual performance to me. And the thing I was looking at when I was considering the Nano and looking at this system and looking at the ITX cases that are out there, it was like most of the ITX cases actually can support pretty long graphics cards. Like the, the length this way, which is kind of where you get the shortness of the Nano, 
uh, with the graphics card is, is not always a, a limiting factor. And in fact, the uh, 380T from Corsair can handle up to 290 millimeter long graphics cards. So it can handle pretty long graphics cards. So I went with the um, I went with the 980 Ti over the Nano on this one. I didn't want to do a Fury X, but if you're into the Fury X, wait till my next build. Uh, the 980 Ti is going to be faster than a Nano. It's just it's just gonna. And since I didn't need the space, I was like, all right, 980 Ti. Uh, this one from Gigabyte I thought would fit in really well because it's got the really nice Wind Force cooler, triple fans. Uh, it is black and it even has a blue LED on it, so it's going to match in with the rest of the uh, color scheme of the case. And it's going to be flat out faster than a Nano or a Fury X generally speaking, for that matter as well. And of course, it fits within the 290 millimeter length since this one is, I believe, 280 millimeters long. Okay, uh, the power supply is the last uh, part from this build. And for this one, I just went with the uh, BitPhoenix Fury 650 watts. Um, I'm sorry there's not better pictures of this. I've actually used this. I used this same one in the blue build that I did. Uh, it's black, white, and blue, uh, and it's got nicely sleeved cabling. And uh, for you can get a cheaper 650 watt, 80 plus gold power supply than this by 10, 20 bucks maybe. But you can actually get this for not too expensive right now, 86, 87 dollars at Superbiz. And uh, it's got really, really nice loop cables, so that's kind of why I went with that one. It's got the full package. All right, and uh, that is my overkill mini ITX gaming build. It's pretty overkill. You, got, you can fit a lot of stuff in that little case. And uh, I, th I, th I think it's fun. If any of you actually build that, let me know, because of, of actually, I kind of wanted to build both of these systems, but I got to cut myself off sometime. All right, moving right along to the 4K gaming setup for $4,000. 4K for 4K. Can you do it? And since you can, that's already been kind of established for less than $4,000. I made this an actual, not just a build as far as the case goes, but an actual entire gaming setup for $4,000. So that means not just the core system, it also means a monitor, and it also means uh, peripherals, keyboard, mouse, and I did a headset. I could have done speakers too, but I didn't. Um, here's the full build. As you can see, the price down here at the bottom comes in at, well, just over $4,000, but you got to pay for shipping. $4,012 was what this rounded out to. And this is an absolutely beastly system. This one is also based on the X99 socket 2011, because um, that's kind of the top end, and both of these were pretty pretty high-end expensive systems. But um, for this one, since it was 4K for 4K, I actually started out in a different place than I normally would, and that was that I needed a 4K monitor. Uh, and honestly, if I was going to buy a 4K monitor right now, this is probably the one I would buy. Uh, this is the Wasabi Mango. Um, if you guys are interested in a little bit more in-depth in info on this one, check out uh, PC Perspective as well as Tech Syndicate Hardware Channels. Both have overviews on this monitor. Wendell did a great job looking at his. Uh, I went for the $700 version, which is not Perfect Pixel. If you want Perfect Pixel, it's about 800 bucks, at least if you buy it here on eBay. These are also available on Amazon. And um, they have just a pretty insane set of features for what you want right now. Um, you get 4K, of course, you need that resolution. Uh, if you're running it at 1080, though, you can actually overclock the it as well. So you can run it at 120 hertz. So if you're into the high frame rate thing, you can also get 120 hertz support. It has FreeSync support. That tied into my choice of graphics cards, which I'll share with you in just a moment. It's also got HDMI 2.0, even though my graphics cards don't. It's okay, though, because it also has DisplayPort. But HDMI 2.0, I think, is pretty important if you're actually investing in a 4K monitor right now. Uh, 444 Chroma setup you can do. You can do 10-bit color. Um, the one negative about the Wasabi Mango is the response time isn't quite as good as some of the faster TN panels that are out there. So if you're really, really into fast response time, then you might want to look elsewhere. But everything else about this monitor, and 42 inches at that. Did I mention it's a 42-inch? Yeah, you put this on your desk, and you'll be in just gaming bliss for the rest of your life. Um, all right, so that's 700 bucks off of the top $4,000 price of this build. So everything else had to fit within the envelope below that, and that gives us 20 no, $3,300 to work with, and we should be able to get a nice 4K system going for that. So let's go back to the, uh, oops, let's go back to the whole list here. We can see the Wasabi Mango here. I actually had to punch that in because it's not on PC Part Picker as of now, but maybe it will be soon. Uh, let's go with sort of the other parts of this. So beyond the monitor, I thought the graphics cards were going to be the most important thing to consider next up. So I went with Dual Fury Xs. That's right. Dual Fury Xs. Why? Why did I do this? Well, my AMD fans out there are like, yeah, Dual Fury X is badass, and I would agree with them. Um, especially when tested at 4K, the Fury X is, it does an exceedingly good job, even though it's only got 4 gigs of memory. It's that super fancy new HBM memory, and uh, I think this is a great option if you're going for a 4K setup right now and you're spending a bit more money. Uh, 
yeah, the the other nice things about this are that it's got, got it, it's got the built-in water cooling, so everything's going to be water cooled on this system out of the box. Um, these actually these cards actually do better at 4K. I already kind of mentioned that, and the monitor I just showed you has FreeSync support, FreeSync, which means you can use the FreeSync with the Fury X's. Now there are of course going to be some some potential. Uh, hiccups when it comes to FreeSync, Crossfire support, and 4K resolution. We anticipate that as long as you have the hardware that's compatible, these hiccups will be worked out via driver support and updates in the future. So, yeah, just bearing that all in mind, a 4K monitor with a with a with a two-way Fury X setup, I think you're going to be pretty happy with, even if you can't always make it, take advantage of the Crossfire configuration. And heck, just uh, turn FreeSync off if that's your thing. Uh, if you don't want Fury X's or if you have a G-Sync monitor or something like that, then feel free to get two-way 980 Ti's. Titan X's were also high in the running in my choice for this one, but that would have been two grand right out of the gate. And, um, I mean, you do get 12 gigs of, of memory for that, so that's hard. It's a hard choice, but for this one, I went to Fury X's. Okay, uh, the CPU, of course, I stuck with Haswell E, because, um, in my opinion, if you're building a system that's this expensive, you should go with Haswell E. So I needed a nice motherboard for that. Uh, the motherboard I chose was this uh, somewhat new one from MSI. This is the X99 Raider. Uh, it's got eight DIMM slots. It's got a pretty much all black design, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's got plenty of room there with triple slot spacing for my two-way configuration. Uh, you got M.2 support and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this also isn't terribly expensive. It comes in at about $220 as of the pricing on Newegg right now. Did I mention my CPU? I don't think I did. I think I totally blanked on the CPU. Uh, CPU is right here. That's a 5930K. Uh, again, here trying to stay within that $4,000 envelope. If you're really going for top end, top end, go with the 5960X. But I thought a 4930K was more appropriate here because you do have more PCIe lanes, and since you are running a dual channel or a, a, a two-way uh, Crossfire setup, then uh, you're going to want you're going to want all the bandwidth you can get just to be on the safe side. Okay, moving along to memory, I went with the 32 gig kit. $4,000 ish budget, that 32 gigs is appropriate. You could shave $100, well, $80 to $100 off the price of this build by going with a 16 gig kit, but this is a HyperX Fury. They're all nice black memories, black PCBs. They look pretty nice, they're pretty low profile. This is only a 2133 kit, but uh, that'll do fine for you. That's not going to affect your gaming since you're not running an iGPU off of it or anything like that. And uh, that'll get you set up with the quad channel. I went with the same cooler on this build, the uh, Cooler Master Neptun 240M. It's kind of like, because uh, I have some other Cooler Master parts in this, and I actually chose this cooler before I went back to the, the Mini ITX build, and I decided maybe I should relook at that cooler to make sure the compatibility wasn't going to be a problem. Uh, I've used this cooler, it's got a nice quiet pump, it does a great job. A little over 100 bucks. Uh, the case I went with is a Master Case Pro 5. This is from Cooler Master. I did a video on this recently, so I had actually worked with it, uh, which means I uh, I like it. Uh, really, really solid build quality. This seems to me like a case that'll last you quite some time. The Pro 5 version has uh, your radiator bracket up at the top, which is important since we're using a radiator. This also comes with a side window, so you can get a nice look at everything inside. And um, it also has more drive cages. Um, not that we'll need all of those, but... Um, we will need at least space for the power supply. I went with this EVGA power supply. This is, I don't even know what the model, they, they're, not, they're not good with their models. It's the 1000G power supply from EVGA. Look at those cables, they're all black. This was my requirements for this. I wanted 1000 watts, I wanted all black cabling, I wanted 80 plus gold or 80 plus platinum, and this one kind of mat matches all that for about, well, 140 bucks after a mail and rebate. Uh, Cooler Master also has uh, a power supply that's 1000 watts, and I forget the, uh, Oh gosh, I forget the model of it now. I was gonna look at that one, but it was a, it was like twenty or thirty bucks more, and I really I was trying to stay under that uh, four thousand dollar price limit. Okay, uh, next up we have storage, and for storage here I didn't go too crazy. I went with the one terabyte SSD because I like one terabyte SSDs. This is a little bit you could you could get by with less than this for sure. But three hundred twenty bucks for a one terabyte SSD and a SanDisk Ultra two, which is a very good SSD. SanDisk uh, does a good job with their controllers, their NAND, uh, as well as overall construction. Um, this has good read and write speeds, a, a freaking terabyte SSD, that's, that's all you need. Um, and then uh, I also wanted to add some mass storage. So this is that uh, Hitachi drive that we've talked about a few times. This is one that Backblaze tested, um, and this was one of their consumer drives that they found to have the most longevity and lifespan. So we've had several people ask me about it since we did that video and say, hey, where can we find that? It's been available for like 50-ish dollars before, but I think the price has gone up a little bit ever since that Backblaze report. But still 65 bucks, two terabytes, mass storage, should be nice and reliable for you, and it gives you something to back up that uh, one terabyte SSD with. Now we have peripherals as well. 
because this is a whole build. So I'm um, sticking with the Cooler Master theme. I got the Quickfire TK. I figured that a, a, a mechanical keyboard would be suitable for this since again it is a $4,000 budget. You're looking for a higher end. A mechanical keyboard I think is one of those luxury items that goes along with it. Uh, then this is a full size mechanical keyboard for 84 bucks from Cooler Master. These have really good, 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 good build quality, uh, Cherry MX Red switches, and it's black and red. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but this whole system, if you put it together, will pretty much all be black and red. See, I got the color scheme taken care of too. I put some thought into these. All right, uh, for the mouse, I chose the Manix Naos, Naos, Na Naos? I never know how to pronounce this. This is a 7000. Uh, I just chose this mouse because it's one of my personal favorites as far as ergonomics and comfort go. Um, you can feel free to choose your own mouse if you don't like this one, but I really like this is just one I've used and I enjoy. 70 bucks, a uh, nice high quality mouse for not like 100 or 100 or more than 100. I was going to say the Rocket Nith might be another option, but um, this is like 120 right now. So uh, okay, I also went with the optical version for that since people were hating on the laser version that I used last time. Lastly, we have a headset, and if I was going to say buy a headset right now, this is the one I would say to buy: HyperX Cloud Gaming headset. It's just actually good, even though it's a gaming headset. And it's got you set up with a nice mic, good sound all together, and that is the entire build, right? I think I went over everything there. Did I forget anything? Let's double check. Let's double check one more time. Let's look at the full list. 5930K, Neptune 240M, X99 Raider, HyperX Fury Black, 32 gig kit, SanDisk Ultra 960 gig, plus the Hitachi Death Star 2 terabyte. Two-way Crossfire Fury X's Cooler Master Master Case Pro 5 EVGA 1000 watt power supply that Wasabi Mango 42 inch 4K monitor Cooler Master CM Storm Quickfire TK Gaming Keyboard Myonix NAS 7000 wired optical mouse and the Kingston HyperX Pro Cloud Pro headset all for four grand so everyone hit up your parental units or, or take out a loan or do whatever the heck you need to get, get four grand together to put together this system I I like getting this all together, I was like this. Like not only did it feel right after getting that all in there, but I was also I even got to the point even with the four thousand dollar budget where I was like nickel and dime and twenty, thirty, forty dollar price differences um, just to get everything kind of within that envelope. So I'm happy with how it turned out. But um, guys, that is all for this video. And and what else do I say at the end? Um, you should stay tuned because as previously mentioned, I do have an August build that I have yet to be put together, which I'm going to do within the next week. So subscribe to my channel for that and maybe hit the like button if you enjoyed it and you want to see more builds. Next month's builds, though, are also coming up very soon and you should also vote for those. Now, since I went with uh, uh, higher end builds for, for this month. Uh, for next month, October builds, I went budget side. So really I'm focusing mainly on the price point here, but I have a $1,000 video editing system, a $700 gaming system, $450 console replacement, or a $300 web and email mom and pop system. Next month I'm going to do my best to get parts together to actually build one of those as well. So stay tuned for that. Also don't forget to check out my store, which is store.paulsharbar.net, where you can buy shirts like this one. I also have mugs and glasses if you're interested in drinking liquid items out of those. Uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and we will see you next time.